six cups of Lureworks Diamond Pearl Deliciousness and many, many baits to make with it. Let's get started. Yes, indeed, the time has come. We have made it through part one and part two of our most recent color demo, looking at these Lure Works Diamond Pearls. Absolutely stunning stuff and can't wait to stretch their legs, my legs, start adding them to bases and see what we can do with them. As I mentioned in part two of that color demo series, we are just going to scratch the surface on these guys. Uh, we have six cups, but we only have six cups, and I have lost count on how many comments, personal messages, DMs, reach outs, texts, the na you name it, with color suggestions, things to add to these. I might not be able to do your suggestion. I might be able to do your suggestion. We're going to pick a couple of them and go with it. I leave it to you to go maybe pick up some of your own. Join me because I'm gonna keep using these guys and we'll just explore the realm of what is possible together. I have an idea, something that I hope you will find fun. I'm looking forward to doing it. I'm going to make the colors. You guys will get to see me make the colors. We'll do those together and kind of, you know, figure out how these different bases interact with it. But I'm not going to show you what mold I shoot with it until the D mold. Little hints though here, we are going to do at least two solid colors. Highly recommended ones, by the way. I do want to do some laminates, and I believe we are going to, as I mentioned in part two as well, open pour just a little bit today. So let's kick this thing off with one of the two most recommended single colors using red. Red is heated up, ready to rock and roll. Undoubtedly, well, I was going to say the most requested, but it's neck and neck between the two. This one was, I'll say, the first that was mentioned. And I actually mentioned it in part one of the demo, but I ended up editing that part out to save some time. When you think red, what are you thinking? Watermelon red, baby. Let's see what it can do. I'm going to add, uh, I want to try to keep this translucent so we can get the most out of our, um, our diamond pearls here. So I'm not going to go too heavy on it. I do like a slightly darker um, watermelon, so we're going to add one drop of black regardless. Got my customary um, flake in here as well. I also have red flake. I want to see what it looks like without this first. We may add just a pinch to set it off. It's a full cup, so let's do 10 to start. Here we go, folks. Oh my lands. <laughs> Holy crap. <sighs> this stuff makes me giddy. I'm telling you what. Holy moly. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay, let's add the black flake. That is a quarter teaspoon of the big stuff, 062. You know, I'll know if you've been around the channel for a while. I like uh, juxtaposition dichotomy, so I go all the way to 62 and then all the way back down to 15, so large and small. I just think that always gives it some nice texture. Let's bring that in there. Wow. Mercy. Okay, so now I'm on the fence. That, that looks really good without the red flake. But would it look mind-blowing with the red flake? I'm going to add some. I hope, that, I hope you're not yelling at me right now. I'm going to add some. I have a sixteenth of a teaspoon right here. Um, I'm going to do half of one sixteenth. This is 015. So it's not going to be much. It's just, I just have to see it. I got to know. We didn't even add the black yet. To be honest, I don't know that we're going to. The, uh, the one drop of black pigment. Oh, 
Yes, that was the right decision. You're, you're entitled to your opinion, but my opinion, a touch of red flake was the right decision. Yeah. We've gone this far. Let's see what a little black will do. I've also heard numerous times, and I agree wholeheartedly, that using any of these colors on their own and just a touch or two, drop or two of black, it's going to set it off all on its own just like that. <clears throat> we may or um, may not be planning such a thing. All right, one drop of black. Bring it full circle here. One. There we go. See if that black actually helps drive this color even more. Yeah, I always did like that, just that twinge darker watermelon. All right, well this is definitely getting too thick, 293. So I'm gonna scrape the sides, I'm gonna get it in the uh, microwave, get it warmed back up. I'm going to shoot these molds all by myself. You guys, in a matter of seconds, are going to see the final product. Y'all ready? I'm keeping it real. I have not peeked at these yet. We are going to open them together. I actually have three different baits to check out. I'll have to strategically place my thumb as we go forward because Epic is so awesome. They label all their molds these days and you guys will get a hint before it's opened. Did y'all see that? Oh yeah. Oh baby, look at these speed shrimp. Wow. Holy moly. Mm-hmm. A whole new twist, right? A whole new twist on watermelon red. Elevating sparkle factor. I mean, the guts are still there, the black with the little red flake and the see-through green and all of that good stuff, but then pow with that diamond pearl. Man, alive. That's fantastic. There they are in hand. So this is interesting. If anything, I would, I would maybe experiment with less diamond pearl when you add it to a base i don't think you need half a teaspoon of that stuff per cup we just needed that when there was no base to really get a picture get a an idea of what the stuff looked like but um when you add it to a base it does so much more i think you can get away with a whole lot less which is good because this stuff isn't cheap i mean it's 12 13 dollars uh, a container i believe was the price so making it last making it um, go a little bit further mm -hmm, that's a win and by the way this speed shrimp it's uh what 3.4 inches okay this guy is one of if not the most underrated ned bait on the market i'm gonna go that far right a lot of guys see shrimp and they only think salt water. This thing is dynamite in the salt water. I've seen pictures, read stuff about guys catching tons of fish in the salt with it, but they see shrimp and they just kind of pass by it. I got it to put it on a Ned rig. And let me just tell you, that little guy right there standing up, these tentacles are just flapping in the water. You got all these extra deals on the side. It is an absolute Ned Rig monster. It's awesome. So if you haven't tried it, I suggest, and you like the Ned Rig, I suggest you check out the Epic Speed Shrimp. Keeping with the Ned theme. <laughs> one of my other all-time favorite Epic bait molds, the Ned Craw. This is the two and a half. They have a one and a half as well, but this two and a half is my other go-to Ned bait. Between those two, it's all I ever throw on a Ned rig. I not only did one of those, but I did two. They come in four cavity. I like to have two so I can shoot eight at one time. And they all came out perfect. So good. One more mold. Any guesses? Hmm. 
It's about that size. Oh, oh yeah. The epic three inch Karapi Slayer. Or what I affectionately call them, the SDG Flicker Minnow. Because these things catch way more than a crappie. Perfect size for bass, small mouth, uh, large mouth, small mouth, walleye, trout. Yeah, crappie for sure. But let's not limit it to just crappie. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yep. That looks awesome. That, I would say, is a good start. Now, for the um, <clears throat> perhaps purists in the room, which I would probably put myself in that category, those that want to see these diamond pearls with just one element, right? Let them really stand on their own. No extra flake, just a little bit of black, maybe a little bit of white base, and see what they look like. Well, that's where we're headed next. Next color is warmed up. We'll jump into that here in just a second. But while it was warming up, uh, I was thinking, seeing that watermelon red and how much of a difference it made and just how good it looked, we have got to see these in the test tank so we can compare what the original and the color demos look like against our uh, base added baits. So be sure to hang out until the end and check them out in the water. I'm looking forward to it. Wasn't sure if I was gonna do that or not, but I think it's gonna be well worth our time. So, the next color that we're dealing with, as you can see, is the gold. And as I mentioned, we are going to keep it simple. We are going to keep it pure. We're gonna grab the black. I'm looking for, there's gonna be a laminate. So I've got the white slash silver in the microwave warming up now. I'm thinking kind of a smoky gold over just pure white. Usually for a smoky shad kind of deal, I add, I think about five drops of black to one cup. I'm gonna go with three, see what that looks like first, and then uh, we can keep going if we need to. Three drops, a nice smoky gold. No other flake, just let these diamond pearls do their thing. Oh man, okay. Yeah, that, that looks good. <laughs> uh, that'll work. Well, the gold was certainly a good start, so our white slash silver is now ready to roll. To that, I'm going to MF White Pearl in the pigment form. I considered a, uh, a white pearl powder, but anytime you laminate um, pigment-based plastisols with powders, eh, Things can get a little squirrely, certainly possible. You just gotta be careful on uh, viscosity and consistency of the plastisol. Make sure it's the same on both, more so than temperature. But this makes it a little easier. White Pearl from MF is a pigment, or is a, pla blah, blah, is a liquid pigment, so we can use it without too much uh, to worry about. We're gonna go with, uh, it's kind of a strong color as well. Let's go with, an equal three, start from there. Now that was three, the black was Lure Works, which is a thicker pigment than MF. So we might need more than three on the MF side, even though it is a little thicker on its own. Yeah, I'm actually gonna go to six. Yeah, there we go. I like it. Looks good, and as I mentioned, we're keeping it pure, no extra flake, nothing else to do. Let's just see what these diamond pearls look like with complementary colors. I'm gonna pull out this guy, shoot some baits, and I'll show you what they look like. All right, ladies and gentlemen, place your bets. What molds did we use? Well, let's start with one that we've already seen, but we have to see it in this colorway. Come on. The Crappie Slayer lives again. Oh yeah. Ooh, the top looks good. Look at those tails. <laughs> There's a sneak peek. Yes. Oh yeah. You can see more as you turn them. Right, you get that, 
you get that, uh, I don't know, iridescent is the right word, but you get that uh, light effect as you turn them. Oh yeah, and the lamination. Wow. Alright, which other mold? I only shot two this time. Well, technically I shot three because I have two of this other one, and I shot them both. So we've seen the uh, delicious crappie slayer. How about a little whip wad action? <laughs> if I did it right, I'm thinking this gold back in that tail. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Whoa. Oh, look at the tail. That gold came all the way down and around. Wow. Uh, here's the third one, by the way. It just came out on the other side. That's actually kind of a good look. You can see the, the line. What an awesome bait to begin with. But throw in some diamond pearls. Hmm. Can we go six for six? Oh, here we go. Two in this one as well. Oh yeah. I guess we should get one of these out, right? There we go. Goodness. Looks even better out of the mold. You can move it around, you know, get that light shimmer on it. Wow. That works. That, that, that works. Yes. It reminds me, by the way, um, I decided even before I started shooting this video, I, I have leftovers. I knew I was going to. Plus, I have all of these colors. I can make more. So, I'd already planned on um, posting all of these baits on the website for you guys. You may not have these diamond pearls, and if you see something you like, you want to grab it, you can head to the website and get it there. I'll do my best to get these. Well, no, I, I will. I'll get these posted up there prior to this video going live. So uh, you can try to snag them if you want. I have a feeling stuff like this whip wad, uh, it may go fast. Let's keep this guy out. I'm thinking purple, that violet that we saw, and green. We laminate those two for a twist, a spin, an alteration, a maybe, a let's try this sprayed grass. Green is ready to go, all heated up as you can see. I've got a color that I've never used before that I thought looked pretty sweet. It's called Spring Green by Lure Works. We'll do that for the green side. Typically in a uh, sprayed grass, the top purple doesn't actually have any purple in it at all. It's a, um, it's a smoke color with purple and green flake. I want to do something a little different. I have used this one before, but not very much. It just sounded awesome. So we're going to use Tequila Sunrise by Bait Plastics for the top color. Here's another look at that color. I have no idea how uh, opaque or translucent it is, so let's start with five and go from there. I think um, the normal base for this color... Oh my lands. <laughs> Uh, vibrant, anybody? Wow. Okay. I think the normal green base for this is watermelon, but we've already used watermelon, so I really wanted something different. That's that's different. Look at that green. Wow. Do want to add a little bit of green flake, though. We're not going to go very heavy. So I've got medium size 035 or 040, whatever you got. Green flake and only an eighth of a teaspoon for the whole cup. This is going to spread out in that um, in that plastic sauce, so we just see a couple of big ones here and there. I do still like texture though, so I've got the 015 as well, same color, but I'm only going to go a half of a sixteenth, so one thirty second if you want to be precise. Perfect. Huh? There's the other color. Now this bait plastic stuff, if I recall, it's pretty thick stuff. So we are definitely going to go easy. I'm actually going to start out with just three drops. Ooh. Sticking with that um, purplish pink theme, you remember that from uh, the demo? 
This violet was more of a, a pinkish purple in my eyes, so this seems to be right in line with that. Although I want it a little bit more saturated. Let's go five to match the other. And we are going to add purple flake to this as well, which will further drive home the purple. So same thing, 035 purple, eighth of a teaspoon. And like the other, one thirty seconds of a teaspoon of 015. If we wanted to be true, as true as possible, if we can be, to this pattern, traditionally, uh, we would add some green to the top as well. What y'all think? Mmm. Decisions, decisions. I want to do it. Let's go with the large, just so it's more spread out. And let's go with a full 16th. So it's less than the purple, but I think it's going to give it a little pop. Yep. That was a good call, in my opinion. Mm -mm -mm. Yes, yes, yes. And look at how much more purple it is just by adding the flake. That's pretty crazy. <sighs> Two big boys to go through. But before we do, full disclaimer, I may have jacked these up. You'll see what they are in a second. Hint, there's ribbing involved. And anytime you have a ribbed bait, it's really good to go as slow as possible on the injection. It gives that plastic time to move down into each one of those ribs and push out the air. If you can kind of um, visualize like that's the rib, right? If you go too fast, you'll run right over the rib and you'll trap the air that's in there. So you gotta go slow, allow the plastic to go down inside, come back up and fill that all out. I got so dang excited to do this that uh, I didn't go super fast, but I went faster than I normally do. So if, uh, if there's some pitting in it, that's on me. Epic bait molds, not on them. The mold always shoots well when I do it right. With all of those nasty disclaimers out of the way, let's check out our uh, sprayed grass inspired creation. Going back to, dun, 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 dun. oh yeah. The Rocket Grub, I thought it was only appropriate to do so since we use it in the uh, demo. That spring green with this diamond green, <laughs> holy shalomolies. That, that's a good combo, okay? Log that one, write it down. That, that's a good mix. Here we go. Oh, heck yeah. Oh, it's actually kind of Smoky even. Huh. You know the original? Oh, heck yeah. Mm-hmm. Check that out. Wow. <laughs> I don't know. I'd say that worked. We have another one. We have that one's big brother. Oh, it's such a big mold. Oh, I see one dent. Yep, that was on me. Dang on it. I knew it. I knew it. See that? Shoot. Anyway, that aside, these four and a halfs are looking spectacular. Oh, man. Look at that. Shoot. Mm, 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 mm. I'm a little lost for words. That was a risk, but man, the risk uh, paid off. I hope you guys agree. This was a success, these two. Yes, yes, yes. That is it for our laminating block and our uh, dual injector. I'm gonna hang that guy up. Go back to the single for the second of two most requested color. Monkey milk, yes indeed. Very highly requested, very highly recommended. And what we got left is the blue. So is there a better combo to go with than the blue diamond and a little bit of this wonderful bait plastics monkey milk? I think not. 
And it's kind of working out because I knew that I was going to want some extra of this. So even before we did the watermelon red and we got to wondering, at least I did, wonder what this would look like less saturated on the diamond pearl side, right? You could use less and still get a good pop. Um, I had already cut this up and put it in a two cup and added plastisol to it. So what we have here is effectively a diluted um, diamond pearl in the blue. So this would be equivalent to instead of a half a teaspoon, a quarter of a teaspoon. I didn't plan that, but it totally worked out. So I'm not going to add any more to it. I had planned to do so. I think it would be worthwhile for us all to see what does it look like a little less saturated with a great base behind it. Here's our two cups two cups of bait or uh, bait plastics actually it is bait plastics 242 but two cups of blue diamond pearl and to that I'm going to add uh, 20 drops so that'd be 10 drops per cup uh, I like my monkey milk to be a little bit more saturated I'm gonna go a little bit more I can still see my um, stir in there. Let's do another 10. That's looking good. Yeah, there we go. So I lose the stir. That would be equivalent to like 15-ish drops per cup, which sounds about right. Traditional monkey milk has got to have some black flake in it, right? So I pulled out the 015 black flake. I don't like a ton of this in uh, my version. So I've only got an eighth of a teaspoon. Let's start with that. If it's just too little across all two cups, then we can add some more. But I definitely don't want to overdo it on the black. And we kind of lose. Yeah, to me that's perfect. Oh yeah. Oh man. I mean, it, it would have been sacrilegious <laughs> to make monkey milk and not shoot it in the three inch crappie slayer. Give me a break. And it does not disappoint. Wow. Can definitely tell that the um, glitter factor, the sparkle factor is reduced, but you can totally see it in there too. See that? So depending on what you're after, if you want subtle, you know, flashy, sparkly stuff, or if you want like smack in your face, then, uh, you know, add to your taste. See that? Subtle, but I bet you that's going to catch tons of light. Mm-mm-mm. Beauties. We've got one more bait. Knew I was going to do the crappie slayer in uh, monkey milk i was kind of on the fence about what to do with the rest of it i thought about uh open pouring i think we're gonna save that for later so if you're wondering where is that i changed my mind because who doesn't love to throw a white frog and even better a monkey milk diamond pearl frog but boy, those look good. Ooh. See that thing scampering along the top? Oh my goodness gracious. There's the uh, hook slot side. Yes, indeed. Boy, the shimmer and the shine on this stuff. Look at that blue. Wow. Two more successful builds we have officially used all six of our diamond pearls if you couldn't tell i had a blast doing this i can't wait to use these some more we're still going to do the test tank so hang on for that because i'm very anxious to see what these look like underwater it's getting late in the evening though a moment of silence I have to mow. <sighs> 
Twas touch and go, but we got it taken care of. The mowing is done, at least for another week. The nice thing about taking a break like that, though, uh, as much as I hate mowing, is that it's dark out now, which means the test tank is glare-free. Let's check out, then, our first bait, a little watermelon red. Oh, yeah. Look at that watermelon red glisten in the water. And oh, by the way, that speed shrimp looking like the world's best Ned rig, in my opinion. Wow. Goodness gracious. It's the whole package, right? Sparkle, a good classic color, a great bait, and a technique that catches them. Whew. That is a win. Let's take a look at our gold and pearl now. First up is the crappie slayer. Put it on a drop shot for you. Oh my lands. Look at the glisten. I'm just going to say that a lot, I think. <laughs> oh my lands, look at that. Have you ever seen anything like that? Oh, the sparkle, all of those things, just over and over and over again. Whew. Reminder, this is the one without anything in it except for a couple drops of black and a couple drops of pearl white. Wow. Uh, I rigged up a whip wad in the same color, so let's take a look at that. You guys remember the wacky hook that we modified on a recent build? Well, this is what it looks like on the whip wad. Absolute perfection. One aught uh, wacky jig on a one eighth ounce head. Slightly modified hook by uh, flexing it out like we did. Mm, mm, mm. Let's see how she swims. I can't get the tail going with so little, little room. But the color looks amazing. And of course the profile, I mean, just on that head, you can see, you get that tail whipping. There you go. Give it a little bit more speed. Body roll, all that glisten in the body roll, just gonna shine and flash all over the place. Oh, wow. That's fantastic. All right, how about our sprayed grass inspired four and a half inch rocket grub? Look at the sparkle. See, I told you I'd say it a lot, but I mean, what else can you say? Wow. Probably um, rig this one up on a drop shot more so than a, than a Ned rig here or shaky head, but you get the point, right? Not, not a drop shot, a Texas rig. Sorry, but for the color purposes, checking this out, wow. Yep, that works. Awesome bait too. And last but certainly not least, the classic. Three inch crappie slayer in monkey milk. Oof. Excuse me, diamond pearl monkey milk. And this one is the um, less saturated diamond pearl, so you can still see it glisten like that, but it's definitely a little bit more toned down. So good to know. You can kind of gauge how much sparkle you want, right? Wow, still very effective though. Oof, gorgeous, gorgeous bait. Don't have enough room in here to do uh, one of the freaking frogs, or I would. It's a topwater kind of deal, right? So I'll just have to leave that to your imagination. But if it looks this good, I'm pretty sure they'll eat it. Leftover carnage back here too molds all the ones that we shot the baits the leftovers it was a good day tater 
I hope you enjoyed this journey down the Diamond Pearl Road. I especially enjoyed it. I will be using these quite a bit in the future. I'm sure you will too if you decide to go out and grab them. But uh, this was a ton of fun. Reminder, these baits are going to be on the website. If you saw something you like and you want to go try to snag it, feel free. They will be ready for you there. Guys, thanks for coming along on the journey today. Tons of fun. Looking forward to the future. But for today, I appreciate you watching. And until the next time, I'll see you guys in the shop.